What's up, YouTube? This is Dev. Today, we're gonna learn how to use AI or artificial intelligence with the Photoshop plugin. So you can create art directly in Photoshop and create detailed images with words and even reference photos, all using the AI called Stable Diffusion. It's gonna be awesome. Stable Diffusion, for those that don't know, is a text-to-image, often called AI or artificial intelligence model that enables people to create any image they want. The Stable Diffusion Photoshop plugin connects directly to Dream Studio, which is Stable Diffusion's open source software in which you can create tons of images in seconds. So once again, we're going to learn how to set up the plugin, create images using AI from scratch, and create images using other images, aka image to image. By the way, this is all free. So make sure you like and subscribe and yeah, let's get into it. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to visit a person named Christian Cantrell, also known as the Stable Diffusion Photoshop plugin creator. He's this guy on Twitter who's just making these really awesome tools that we can easily use. So we're gonna go to his webpage and I'm gonna put it in the link below so everybody can visit it. And basically click right here. From there, it's been accepted into the Adobe Exchange, which is a place where a lot of plugins exist. So you can easily just go right here, click it and get to installing it straight away. One thing I will say is that you should have the latest Photoshop updated. That makes it really easy to use this. And furthermore, just making sure that all of your software is up to date. You will need to create a Dream Studio account. It's very easy and you can basically go to beta.dreamstudio.ai. It's free you can use a Google email address or a Discord account to create this. And from there, you're going to plug in an API key and it's really easy to do. So you shouldn't have an issue with that. If you do, you can find out more in the comment section below. But from there, let's get going. Cool. So once you get it installed, the first thing you can really do is just check out your plugin bookmark at the very top of Photoshop and you're gonna see a stable diffusion menu button right here. You basically click it and from there you'll have a stable diffusion menu pop up I'll drag it over here where you can basically start to just imagine everything that you want within your stable diffusion Photoshop element so you can type in anything you want I'm a big fan of Akira so I'm gonna type in Akira in the form of a superhero just leave it at that so from here, you have a bunch of different options. You have prompt strength, which means that whatever you type into this particular text box will be greatly influenced by it. So you can drag this marker up or down to basically influence your project. And then you can also import other images too. But let's start with this. I'm gonna click dream and we're gonna see what pops up. Boom, okay, so we have some really cool options. Let's see right here. And voila, now you have a new image. This is Akira in the form of a superhero, purely created from artificial intelligence. From here, you can check the menu out. So there are a bunch of things that I can change once I already have an image. I can make it so that I have multiple images being produced at once, AKA number of images. I can change the width, the height. There's a really advanced option where basically you have a seed number and you can keep that constant or change but we're not going to get into that because this is a beginner <laughs> guide so I want to make it really easy for everyone and from there you can click layer right under the photo to layer it in within Photoshop you can also click save as to basically save the photo and use for other items you can do a bunch of things I really suggest that people explore you can even click the history button to see every prompt that you've ever created and every image that has been produced from that prompt which is really awesome okay now now we have something really awesome, basically called image to image. This is where you can take an image that already exists and you can create new images based on that old image. So I can take a photo I took of a friend, a family member, anything like that, and I can now create new images that look essentially like that photo. So this is really awesome. But basically what I've done here is I've gone to Photoshop, I opened a new photo. Now I have a photo here. This is me DJing out in San Francisco. I don't live there, but great place. From here, the main thing is pretty much the same thing. We're gonna do Akira in the form of a superhero once again. We're gonna make sure that the prompts is maybe, you know, halfway, 13 or 14 or something. And then we're gonna make sure that the images are, number of images are three. The most important element is that we need to make sure that we include the image. So you need to click this little checkbox here 
And it's basically going to take this photo and it's going to dream new iterations of based on, you know, what the photo is. And the second most important thing is image strength, which is a new option that pops up when you click include image. And from here, this is how influential the actual image, the pre-existing image that you have is going to be in regards to your prompt. So you can balance this one with the prompts and pretty much figure out which one you want to be more influential in your piece. I really like image strength, so I'm gonna make it about 80. So it'll look like my photo, but maybe the prompt will be really strong too, and that will also influence it. So from there, you know, we just click the dream button. And once again, we have about three images that are gonna be generated from this particular prompt. And now we can go check out these photos. So we have this new image. It looks insane. It's like an animated but real version of the photo. It's from another universe for sure. And if you can compare it to the previous image, they're definitely different. Now, of course, like this is just, you know, a quick tutorial. I could have done a million things to make the photo like purely animated. I could have made it photorealistic, but I'm a little lazy and I just wanted to show people how to get started basically. So from there, that's pretty much it. You can really take this tool and do whatever you really want to do with it. There are so many options out there to really recreate this. So make sure that you like and subscribe, check out this Photoshop plugin and put your own art in there. Send me a link of everything you've done and really get going and have fun.